Well, let's just take that uh, uh, to you, Shelly. Um, he's making a point. I mean, the kids learn their culture language at home. They start kindergarten and first grade. And instead of being taught in English, they're taught in that language, whatever it may be. Doesn't that sound stupid? Well, you know what? It would be illegal if that kind of thing took place because our present system absolutely requires from the day that children enter our schools that they absolutely get English language development mm. daily uh -huh. and that as the years progress, more and more of their education is done in English. But the point here is that we don't have that program on our ballot. When people go into the polls on June 2nd, they're not voting yes or no on LA Unified's mm. program. They're voting yes or no on Prop 227. And what Prop 227 does is something entirely different. It says, put all the children, sixth graders with kindergartners, 12th graders with ninth graders, eighth graders with sixth graders, throw them all together in a classroom and teach them for only one year, 180 days. Now, I've asked Ron Unz at other debates before, find me one classroom, one school, one program that he can point to that after 180 mm. days, kids are ready to be in a regular mainstream program with your children in mind, mm. and they can compete with native speakers. Mm -hmm. There is no program that has ever proven that you can do that. Now, if he had put on the ballot a mandate for making schools do all the programs that work, yeah. then we would be really happy here. We would all be voting for this proposition. Mm. But instead, he put on an idea that mm. has never been proven, and when it's been tried, has failed. Now that's our problem with it. Not that everybody has to be in a bilingual program or an English immersion program. Our program is we have something on the ballot that people are voting for that's been tried and has failed, and now he's mandating it for 1.4 million uh, it children. It sounds pretty logical, but let's face it, Shelley. The kids are graduating, and they can't write and speak fluently in English. Therefore, they can't integrate into the job market. They, they, they really have a hard time making it in society. The whole idea is to get them to speak the language of the country. There's no question about it that some of our programs are more successful than others. One thing we have to keep in mind, though, is 70 percent of all the children here in California who need to learn English to be fluent, yeah. 70 percent of them are in English-only programs right now. Mm. A very small percentage of all the kids in the state of California ever see the inside of a bilingual program. So we're we're talking about all these children mm. who need an improved education, yeah. and we're blaming it on a very small number who are in one type of a program. What we have to say is that in general, we have to, and I think Mr. Diaz was agree with this, we have to elevate the kinds of courses that we offer children. Mm. For many of the kids who you're talking about, the schools don't even offer them the courses mm. that they need. Whether or not it's in English or in other yeah. language is mm. another issue. Mm. What we need to do is look at the successful programs and model other schools after that. Not take a failed system, one that doesn't work, mm. 180 days, give it to every single child, one size fits all, mm. when we know it doesn't work. Well, how about that, Ron? I mean, one size doesn't fit all, and 180 days immersion has not proven that successful in some of the places. Why not have various strategies? Why not let the legislature now, which has come up with some other ideas, you've heard again of uh, the opposition's position. Most of the claims made of our, our initiative are complete falsehoods or distortions. That really For is instance, the truth. Take For student. example, our initiative in no way encourages or requires children of different ages to mix together. That's an complete falsehood. It doesn't say it in the initiative. Second of all, our initiative does not limit children to only one year of sheltered English immersion. If they have not learned enough English after one year, they can stay in the program for a longer period of time. If they need two or three years, their parents can apply for a waiver to keep them in the program for a longer period of time. Mm. They're only moved out of the program once they've learned enough English to be able to do regular schoolwork in English. But since the overwhelming majority of the children who don't know English in California public schools come into the schools when they're five or six years old, they're in yeah. kindergarten or the first grade, mm -hmm. at that age, it's very quick and easy to learn enough English to be mainstream. Kindergarten children don't need to learn advanced academic English to be able to keep up with other kindergarten students. Okay, how about that, Holly? On both points, he said, first of all, it's not true that all ages are put together in one thing. And then he says if they don't get it together in that, they still have more time to do right. it. And I think Ron Unz regrets the fact that he wrote his initiative the way he does because it very clearly says that children have only 180 days to learn English. Okay, Ron, what it about that? It doesn't say it. We have a secret weapon. It's called your ballot pamphlet. 
read your ballot pamphlet, read the text of the initiative. These charges are utterly false. Actually, I, I really want the voters to read the ballot handbook <laughs> because it does say very clearly that children are limited to 180 days, that children of different ages will be mixed into a classroom. And I think Ronans regrets that because, you know, before he wrote this, he had never even stepped foot into a bilingual education classroom. He's not an educator. He's a wealthy millionaire who ran for governor and lost. And, you know, it, I think he would have written a very different initiative if he had done what Shelley said. Look at the programs that are working that are successful and put those on the ballot. But why limit children? Mm -hmm. Why deny children the mm -hmm. same educational opportunity that every other child gets when they come to the schoolhouse door mm -hmm. simply because they don't know English? And these are children that may be native English speakers. Ron? Oh, let, let's look at the facts right now. Again, almost half of the students in bilingual programs in the state of California are in Los Angeles. Los Angeles Unified did a major internal study on the effectiveness of its programs. They looked at all the students who had started kindergarten in a bilingual program. Mm -hmm. And after six straight years at the same elementary school in the same bilingual program, almost two-thirds of the children had still not learned enough English to even take a test. That's six years in bilingual education. If we look at the statewide numbers, today in the state of California, a quarter of all the children in public schools don't know English. And each year, of the ones who don't know English, English, only five or six percent learn it. Mm. Ninety-five percent of the children who start a school year not knowing English have not learned it by the end of that school year. Furthermore, when you're looking at Los Angeles, it's not a small fraction who are in bilingual education. The figures I've seen show that if you're talking about Latino children who don't know English in Los Angeles, who are in elementary school, Almost 80% of them are in these bilingual programs that don't work. First of all, his, his figures are not true. And second of all, if you just read from his initiative, it says very clearly here, this is a temporary transition period not normally intended to exceed one year. Mm. Now that means you have to be abnormal, abnormal to get more than one year, because mm. the normal track will be a year. Mm. Now we have Gloria Tuckman, the co-author yeah. of this bill. Yeah. She has the English immersion program that this is modeled after. She's a first grade teacher. She's been all over the state saying all her children do exceptionally well after one year in her classroom. Mm. So we looked at her kids after last year. Yeah. Not one child in her classroom in first grade had enough English to make this transition. Now that means her whole classroom would be abnormal. Mm -hmm. They would have to go for a waiver. Mm -hmm. Now, but let me tell you something else about mm -hmm. her classroom. Yeah. She's a first grade teacher. Right. They all had kindergarten. Yeah. So her kids already had a two year program. They're all going on to a second grade e English immersion program. They're going to have three years now. Now Ron suggests that all of her families should go year after year pleading for a waiver mm -hmm. because districts don't have to grant them. Mm -hmm. So in fact, Ron Unz's Alice Callahan was quoted as saying, the language acquisition process is three years. Now we've got abnormal kids needing three years, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Jaime Escalante, when he was interviewed by La Opinion a week and a half ago, said that when Ron came and showed him this initiative, he told him the problem with this initiative, he liked it, but the big problem with, with it was the one-year requirement, that he did not think kids could do it in one year. He even used his own son as an example. His own son needed three years with all the advantages of having well, Escalante as a father. Henry, Henry, I mean, look, you don't want, you know, when we talk about Latino bashing, for this to turn out to be one of these situations where they're discriminated against. 